Okay, morning everyone. Um, it's half 11, so let's get started. Um, welcome to our seminar on UX automation and talent pipelining. Um, my name is Warren Davidson. I'm head of uh, digital talent attraction at Format. Um, Format specialises in developing careers websites that plug into ATSs. My name is David Johnson, um, more commonly known as DJ. Um, I work alongside Warren, uh, helping clients to actually get the return uh, and get the, make their websites deliver to the best. Great, so um, today we're going to talk about both sides of your talent attraction st strategy. Obviously there's two sides to it. There's the how do we get candidates to the website in the first place and then how do we turn them into applications um, uh, and hires in our ATSs. So I'm going to talk a little bit, little bit about talent attraction strategy first and then DJ is going to talk about some of the must-haves for your careers website, uh, UX and ATX plug plugins, and content marketing and talent pipelining. So, without further ado, let's talk about talent attraction strategy first. So, for me, it really falls into uh, three areas. There's obviously tons of stuff you can do, but these are kind of the basics to start off with. So, recruitment SEO is all about generating more traffic from Google um, and improving your rankings for different um, job titles or keywords. If you want to get some proper brand awareness and reach for your brand message, you need to be doing some sort of digital advertising for your careers website. Um, content marketing, obviously, um, you know, really important to, to be able to tell your story. Um, and also, we can't really do any SEO without some content, and we can't really do some content without SEO as well. So they're both intrinsically linked and can really help you guys to improve your rankings. And also, from an ongoing point of view, it's about continually trying to improve our website. So again, one of the messages you're going to hear from us today is that it's not about building a website and leaving it for six months to a year. It's about improving it every single month and trying to make those 1% changes to get more applications out of our website. So, if we look at SEO um, as, a, as a starting point, as a, rule, as, a, as a basic thing. So, some of the things that you guys can do straight away, you guys, guys can do today, um, create a keyword deck. So, these are the keywords that you want to rank for in Google from one month to the next. Um, these are often going to be based on keywords, locations, sectors you want to rank for. Um, and one of the great things you can do is monitor your competition. There's lots of free tools out there that allow you guys to monitor, to monitor your competition. So you want to report back to the business and show how well you're doing. But equally, those guys that are already on page one for the terms you want to rank for, you'll be able to learn certain things about how their websites are structured, uh, how their landing pages work. Uh, landing pages is a key thing we're going to talk about today throughout the presentation um, and generating landing pages can really improve your, your rankings for those particular key uh, job titles and locations that you want to, you want to target. And again, um, those can often be campaign pages that you're running every single month as well. Um, things like inbound links are really important as well. This is one of the ways that Google will um, rank and, uh, and measure the importance of your website. So reviewing inbound links is really important. We've had quite a few clients over the last 12 to 18 months that have actually been under SEO attack. And the first thing that goes when you're under SEO attack is your rankings, uh, and that can be influenced by those inbound links. So it's something that you need to review from a protection point of view at least once a quarter. Um, and again, a big thing that we're going to talk about today is making sure that all your jobs are visible to Google. Some of the ATSs that are certainly here today, um, all the jobs are actually hidden from Google, so Google can't even read them. So again, uh, making sure that you have um, uh, that ATS plugin working uh, and getting those jobs viewed by Google, really important, particularly with Google for Jobs being launched 12 months ago. Okay. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning there, um, content and SEO are intrinsically linked. Um, so what sort of content can you create to help drive your SEO? So seven types of content that tend to dominate uh, SEO results. Um, big one there at the top is answers to questions. People put questions into Google, okay? So they're going to be putting questions in about your organization. So if you can answer the who, what, why, where, what, where, why, try and say that after a few drinks, um, then you'll it'd be a good start from a content strategy point of view. Uh, how to's instructions. You know, from a recruitment point of view, we have quite a few clients that are starting to uh, really elaborate on uh, how you apply for a job in terms of the onboarding, the recruitment process. So again, it's a great starting point from a content point of view. Uh, definitions, we all have acronyms in our industries that we can define, uh, and again, it's hooks into more candidates. Uh, comparisons and price cost, cost breakdowns, again, people love a comparison um, across industry. And then things like best lists, so for, um, for us, a lot of our recruitment agency clients actually write content about best companies to work for within particular industries and sectors. So again, that's something that you can, that you can uh, um, get on the back of. And again, a lot of your uh, applies and candidates will ask, frequently ask questions. So really important that you collect that data from candidates, find out what they want to know about your organizations, and then start writing content about it. 
this is an example a uh, piece of content that we wrote, uh, I wrote earlier this year. And again, what we're trying to do here is um, answer questions, get into that zero results position um, within Google. So this was uh, all about Indeed organic traffic being removed for recruitment agencies um, earlier this year on the 7th of January. So again, um, in this instance, we're asked to answer the question, when is Indeed organic traffic being turned off? So it just shows that something quite simple um, gets us you know, a very high uh, result in Google. And that kind of brings me on to my, my next point. Um, and that's about um, digital marketing, sorry, digital advertising. So with um, Indeed Organic being turned off for recruitment agencies earlier this year, obviously it doesn't affect you guys, but it does affect the, the market as a whole. Um, so our active advertising market just become just became 10 times more competitive because every single recruitment agency out there has just lost a bucket load of conversions um, and traffic and they're trying to replace it. So they're all piling into Indeed, they're piling into Google PPC, they're looking at other aggregators, so it just makes the whole market a lot more competitive. Um, from a digital marketing or digital advertising point of view, you've kind of got two sides of the coin here, active and passive uh, advertising, you know, a term well used within the industry. So for us, it's generally all about uh, aggregators and Google PPC. So because of what's happened with Indeed, a lot of aggregators out there are now giving away trials um, and, 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 and traffic. So there's got to be another 30 or 40 aggregators in the UK that you guys can get traffic and applications from. Um, and then from a Google PPC point of view, we do a lot of Google PPC campaigns targeting specific keywords and locations and obviously creating landing pages for those campaigns to make sure that you're getting a good quality score. Um, from an active point of view, you'll notice that I have excluded things like job boards and LinkedIn here because um, we are interested in you guys investing in your brands and getting people to come to your websites rather than um, staying on LinkedIn or staying on Total Jobs or wherever it might be. Um, it's all about investing in your, you know, your websites and your employer brands. Uh, from a passive point of view, um, two things that we can go after, content and um, display advertising. So content marketing is really all about marketing those pieces of content that, you are, that you're generating on your website. It's all, it's all well and good creating that great content, but if no one's seeing it, it's kind of pointless. So we, are, we market it via social media, content networks, and um, native advertising. But we're also finding... Um, some good success by mixing up display advertising with either Google PPC or Indeed advertising because we're getting the applications via the active market and we're getting that brand awareness uh, and telling your story by promoting content via display campaigns. So I guess the message here is to try and get a mixture of both active and passive advertising. You'll find that a lot of, a lot of clients, a lot of recruitment agencies put too much money into that left-hand side because they want results um, tomorrow, understandably. Um, and once you've done uh, a bit of SEO and a bit of digital advertising, you're getting candidates coming to your website, how do you keep them on the website? How do you engage them? And we use uh, a content pyramid of format. So um, you know, your content is really in three different areas. So yes, you have your jobs. Yes, you have your uh, blogs and your um, uh, videos or infographics or whatever it is you're producing, but also you've got your resourcing teams as well. So the idea here is that when a candidate arrives at the website, whether they arrive on a piece of content or on jobs, uh, they are presented with related content or related jobs, or they're able to contact uh, the resourcing teams. One interesting thing from heat maps that we see on job landing pages is that you get equally as many clicks on apply as we do on contact the resourcer, okay? So it's important that you don't lose um, those, you know, that contact from candidates that are maybe aren't quite ready to apply today. And then from a content point of view, um, again, it's all about combining SEO with that employer brand piece, okay? So we'd always recommend that you do 75% brand building or employer brand. And Deej is going to give us some examples of that later. Uh, so it's about telling your stories. It's about telling what it's like to work in your organizations. But equally, we need 25% to drive those rankings and support SEO. And I don't mean um, packing articles with keywords. It's, it's much more uh, advanced than that these days. It's just about writing naturally in the sectors that you want to, um, that you want to rank in. Also, internal linking is important as well. Uh, linking to landing pages that are relevant to your content and linking to previous pieces of content that are in the same, in, in the same area. Also, spread out your posts. I find you know, a lot of um, companies uh, will post uh, five blogs on, on, on a Monday or whatever. You've got to spread them out over a month to get that, um, that, that brand benefit and that SEO value. Uh, and also deliver a variety of content. So, you know, talk about um, videos, infographics, different types of content. And also, a really important point is I think we're all guilty of posting a piece of content and going, great, I've done it. Uh, that's it. But you can recycle old pieces of content that are still relevant from a year ago, uh, re-optimize them, repost them, um, particularly if they're generating you traffic and applications. And then finally, just to finish off, uh, better candidate experience. And um, 
this is really all about that ongoing review of your website. Um, uh, it's about reviewing the website every month and not every year. So one of the ways that we work out the effectiveness of a website is looking at conversion rates. So your conversion rate is essentially how many applications you had last month divided by uh, the traffic number, and that gives you a conversion rate. We aim for about 20 to 30% conversion rate, so that's kind of something that you can aim for in the future. But equally, every month, um, if you have the time and, the, and you get the chance, try and review things like application process. So um, Vodafone for us is a great example where uh, before they were integrated with Taleo, the application process was eight minutes long. So you can imagine they were losing you know, quite a lot of, uh, uh, of candidates. And now that's two minutes long. We've had seen some really big improvements, which DJ is going to talk about in a sec. Um, but also, I think a lot of um, organizations also have CRM. So again, rather than pushing candidates down the application route, you can try and get them into your, into your CRM as well. Um, can candidates get in touch easily? So as I talked about, people like to talk to people. Um, and are our calls to action in the right place? Again, um, just changing the application button from red to blue can improve your conversion. So it's about looking at those call to actions. And again, what's our most popular pieces of content? How can we make the most of them? Can we put some more messaging on those pieces of content that are working for us? So there's loads and loads of different stuff that you can do. Um, and why is this all important? Why am I talking about this stuff today? Um, obviously, UK unemployment rate, um, despite um, our political leaders making an absolute sham of things over the last two or three years, um, UK unemployment rate is at an all-time low since the 1970s, so there are never been as, as fewer candidates in all our markets as there has been before. And equally, despite us having a bit of a dip this year, um, there's never been so many vacancies in the country as well. So you've got hardly any candidates, tons of and tons of vacancies, so you've got to get this stuff right, um, both from a digital marketing point of view and from a website point of view. Cool, thanks, Juan. So, in terms of yeah, Warren talking about there in terms of how you can get people on the website, there's great ways um, to do that. You can all write great content. You all know your people. You've got an audience out there that you can talk to and find out why they do what they do with your organisations. Uh, you can also great, write great job adverts. I know most of you probably don't copy the job description, but there's an awful lot that do. Um, so you've got some great content that can bring people to the website, but you know there are some key things that you need to look at. Um, and a lot of career websites are allowed, like the modern couple. They're sat on their sofa texting each other. Well, that's what my other half says when she wants something to drink. Um, basically, your applicant tracking system, your career website, aren't talking. So you know, what you've got here are some examples. You know, Workday, Success Factors, Taleo, Aperture, iSIMS. You know, the list goes on. Um, that effectively, you, the, the applicant tracking system is working in isolation to your actual career site. And what do I mean by that? Basically, as Warren said, Google can't find your jobs. So here's an example on the left there. I'll read it in terms of, this was Vodafone's career site um, before we got involved with them. 16 pages Google could see. This is Vodafone, you know, one of the biggest employers in the UK and globally. But uh, Google only thought there were 16 pages of the career site. On the right hand side here, we've got, uh, I think it was about three months after go live, 3,720 pages have been indexed because all of their jobs were visible under Vodafone rather than sat on Taleo. And this is the reason. So here we've got you know, the Taleo uh, platform. You've got the company name, Taleo.net. So all the vacancies actually sit on Taleo. And here's an example of one of our really old websites, also on Taleo, Icon uh, PLC. And you can see the actual job, Director of Clinical Operations, is actually on their career site. So that means Google is actually seeing this really, really important content. Imagine going shopping and Curry's have put it on their stock management system so you can't find that TV. You can't find that fridge. It's basically invisible. That's exactly the analogy I'm drawing. And I've been talking about this. I make no bones about the fact I've been talking about this for far too long, you know, over 10 years. And it's really slowly in terms of changing. And what this means is effectively you're making, whether you are, you know, whatever brand you are, you're making life difficult for Google. And if you make life difficult for Google, anybody that's actively looking, whether it's, you know, browsing in terms of thinking about a new job or actually I need a new job, um, make, you're making it a lot difficult for them to find you. And that's been going on for years. But Google for Jobs brought this to another lev level um, 12 months ago. So, you know, here's an example here. You know, the AA, you know, you've got jobs there. Total jobs, Glassdoor and LinkedIn. Where's the career site? If you look through, you've got apply on total jobs, apply on recruit.net, rep reply on SE1 jobs. And Savannah Recruitment, who ever heard of Savannah Recruitment? Google has. 
So all of these obscure aggregators that Warren mentioned have made themselves optimized around Google and are now basically getting traffic alongside the job boards. Um, at the end of the day, job boards are expensive. You know, investing in your website is going to be a lot more cost effective. You can test this for yourself. Um, so, you know, you literally just go, you know, search.google.com, test rich results. And if you search Google for rich results testing tool, you'll find it. And all you need to do is go to one of your jobs, copy and paste the web address, put it into here, and you'll see instantly whether your, your jobs are actually available to Google. I'll give that a couple of minutes while everybody takes photographs. Um, so it's all about making life simple. Um, so, yeah, it's about, yeah, who recognises this from Workday? This was uh, SNC-Lavalin, who took over Atkins, and we relaunched the website. This was their old application process. Who recognises this? That's success, success factors. If you're using Telea, you probably recognise a similar, a similar scenario. When did you last go and buy something, and were you asked to register before you actually did anything else? Yeah, because actually, if, you, if retail did that, nobody would ever buy anything. But, oh, I don't want to create an account. Yeah, I want to buy something. So the first thing they ask for you is your email address. Let's capture something that we can use. And what that means is that between 50 and 80% of candidates who have clicked apply, abandon. They give up. They try, yeah, if you've ever tried to create an account with Taleo, you have to have alphanumerics, 15 characters, standing one leg howling at the moon to actually allow you to actually register. I can promise you that. I've, I've got, you know, you use it so many times, like, can I just apply? Can I just complete it? That's what it means. Imagine if your product, people that wanted to buy your product, that many people were abandoning. So it's about making things simple. Capture information that is essential for you. Name, email address, CV. If you want to, so SNC Lavin, it's really important. Their recruiters know where somebody works, how much they're earning, because then they can make a quick decision on whether that person is worth proceeding. It's also, they haven't taken the candidate through war and peace, and they're actually not relevant. So actually, you're not forcing the candidate to waste their time or the recruiter's time. Or you can streamline it really quickly. You can just capture personal information, upload the CV. I want people's CVs. It's more of a recruitment agency model. Yes, that means you're going to have more candidates, but heaven forbid you're going to have more candidates to select from. So what does that mean in reality? Vodafone, we're losing 75% of every single application. Now, that's a big consumer brand, let alone a, a, a business brand. Um, after the plug-in into Taleo, which Warren mentioned, brought it down to two minutes, actually, you can do it in one minute if you really. It's a bit like Phil Schofield saying, get in there, I can do it in 59 seconds. 75% of people completed their application. So that means they're now in a lovely position that they can actually look at how do we filter people out. How do we actually now focus on the, the quality people and basically or to get the people who aren't relevant to self-select? It also gives you the opportunity to start doing things about the 25% that didn't complete. So, you know, you're looking at a, a job. Now, think about this in terms of retail. How many people have gone to buy something, put something in their basket, started the process, and then left? How many people then get an email a few hours later saying, Hi! You forgot something, click here. It's you know, well known in retail or travel or any other you know, consumer-based uh, process. So let's do that with recruitment. We've captured their email. They go to actually apply, but oh, I'm one of the 80% of people that doesn't have my CV on my phone. But we know their email, so we can then ping them a little email address, an email afterwards saying, hi, you forgot to apply for this job. We've kept it in your basket, just click here. And there are three reasons why you should apply for this job with us. So making sure that the best quality people, who may be the ones that are time poor, may be the ones that don't have their CVs on the mobile, they're the ones you're, you're starting to bring back in. Now, Warren mentioned landing pages. So think about you know, consumer marketing. Think about when Apple launched a new product. You get a big razzmatazz. They send you through to the Apple iPhone 12C or whatever it's going to be next time. And it's all about that, why you need to have that phone. It's the best thing since sliced bread. You can do exactly the same 
in terms of recruitment. So this is an example with Vodafone Big Data, huge from, from their point of view. So we create a landing page around Big Data, telling everybody about what it is to be a Big Data specialist within the business. In to bring in the people, Warren mentioned that jobs, people, content. You know, it's bringing the people to light, telling their story, but don't let them hunt for it, put them front, front and centre. But as Warren mentioned, not everybody may be ready to uh, actually apply. So when they, you click on a link, interested to find out more, give them the option. They can, if they're ready to join the team, find the jobs. But also, if you're using a CRM, use a quick capture. Are you interested? Give us a little bit more of information. Let's start the conversation. It's not too heavyweight. We're not sort of like asking you for your size of trousers or anything like that. Just give us a little bit of information. And it helps you to actually then start nurturing. And you'll, you've heard a lot of people, you know, Candidate ID talk about you know, talent pipelining, nurturing. This allows you to start building in that CRM capability. And then it's about the content. So what you all have is lots of people and lots of people's stories. Now, whether you are looking to uh, promote different types, of uh, different types of business areas, different sectors, different job roles, or whether you're looking to promote diversity and inclusion, try and you know, show what you're like and what your aspiration, aspirations to become a more diverse organisation, content is what allows you to do that. So, you know, here's some great lo a load of examples. So, yeah, when we first started working at Atkins, all they had were their projects but they knew what their projects were, and people were really inspired to work for the organisation because of the projects they worked on. And then it was about telling the career stories about people behind that. So in terms of you know, women in engineering, it's about talking about the um, you know, people that actually were doing the jobs. It was about promoting, you know, putting videos. So really easy to embed a video into a, a landing page, and through, you know, a video is worth way more than a piece of content. Everybody talks about, about you get seven times plus the engagement or video. It also gives you something to post on social. So your content starts here, you share it on social, and then you bring them back in. <laughs> so I'm talking about you know, transport planning. I'm interested, I was talking about, um, actually one of Atkins recruiters came, popped on to stand and say hello, and you know, works in the transportation side of things. So here's an example. It's promoting the transportation area of the business with somebody's story, but it's also promoting women in engineering, because that's really huge. And anybody that's recruiting engineers now, it's getting that diversity there but giving them another next article that's relevant to help move them along and get them through the, um, between page to page rather than going, oh, where do I go now? Add some video in. So again, people that are reading it can, can actually talk to, the, you know, find, talk to the person, find out more about the individual through their videos. And you don't need to do these over corporate, over sanitised. You can do them on your phones. You know, videos on the phones are so authentic because people believe it. We all take videos these days. I've been doing it this morning, people winning on the, the stand. But then tap them on the shoulder with relevant jobs. So it's a case if you come through from Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, a campaign, you land on a page, and uh, you know, alongside that content, you've got relevant jobs that may be of interest. It also gives you, you start grouping content together to talk about diversity and make it easy for people to actually see that you do run and manage and are part of a diverse organisation. So you can start actually bringing that content and bring it together. So, you know, whether, you know, I said whether you're looking at, you know, celebrating pride, LGBT, whether you're looking at, you know, removing the glass ceiling in terms of showing, showcasing how well women do within your business. All of this can be brought together and automatically put in front of people, so you're not having to dig into it. So, what can you do tomorrow, today? So you can look at the digital marketing basics. So in terms of what Warren was saying, in terms of looking at, you know, are people able to find your site in Google? You know, how are you ranking? How are your competitors ranking? You can start looking at where you're actually advertising. You know, am I advertising in the right places? Am I driving people through, to, through it? Work out your conversion rate. So have a look at how many people visit your website and your jobs, and then how many people actually end up being an application. And then if you really want to scale yourself, how many people actually then end up as a hire. So you start looking at the actual funnel, because if you know how many people it takes to turn one, get one application into one hire, you can start thinking, how many people do I need to put in the top of that funnel? And whether that's using advertising, or whether it's using social, or campaigns, it will depend on your organisation. Can Google see your jobs? It's a really easy one. Just go and Google, Google jobs at your company. But then start Googling jobs that you regularly recruit for and see who actually appears. Are you in Google for jobs? You know, you'll see the little panel appearing. 
and start telling your story. You know, you can go out and talk to people, run little competitions, chat to the people, frequently ask questions. When you're doing, going through the recruitment process, what are people asking you? Compile that content together. Asking questions in terms of people are saying, what is it like to work at? You know, a lot of the days in the live content, you will get two, three hundred views every month because that's what people are interested in. What it's like to be a business analyst at so-and-so. What it's like to be a, a clinical research associate at Icon. They are constantly getting traffic, and I mean constantly across years. You know, we've got some um, articles, Days in the Life, that are still getting 150 views every month that went live five, six years ago, because people are Googling them, and Google's finding them. So I hope that's given a little bit of an insight in some of the Things, some of the horror stories, uh, but also some of the good things that you guys can do. Um, thank you for listening. And any questions? Silence. <laughs> Just very quickly to finish up. So we stand 22, come away with some Prosecco or some mints or some Ivy vouchers, right? Uh, and also, Deej is running a diversity seminar, uh, a webinar, sorry. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we're actually. If you're interested in diversity, then get on that. So about how you can use diversity in your content. Um, we've got a webinar next Tuesday. If you if you come to Format Recruitment uh, on LinkedIn, we're advertising there. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.